All right, well, we are out in the shop today working on my new to me 2018 F80 M3. So it's a little different than what we're used to working on building swapped cars and race cars and all this stuff. It's uh, way more normal, way more straightforward <laughs> than what we're used to doing. Less room for interpretation, but it's fun. I'm excited to see if we can get this thing fixed up. So I bought this car a little over a week ago and it was an insanely good deal, but it came with some issues. So. We've got some things to finish up. There's just some loose ends. The car was lightly wrecked. It was 90% fixed, but it's still not 100% back together. Uh, so that's what we need to do. Uh, but also we have some issues and those are really the biggest thing we're trying to address here. So we've got a pedestrian warning system and a collision warning. Uh, which is something to do with the sensors. We got some ideas on what to check for that. And then more importantly, we have a chassis malfunction, which that limits you going into all the M modes and doing all the fun stuff, which is the whole dang point of having a car like this. So that's the thing we want to get fixed up first. So it seems to be narrowed down to the steering rack. The steering rack is not communicating correctly with the sensor at the steering wheel. It's an electric rack. Um, and it has sensors to figure out what your steering angle is as you're driving so the computer can do all its wizardry with the electric locking diff and anti-lock brakes and all of those things. So that malfunction is causing it to limit your driving so that way you don't go guns a blazing and it can't save you basically. Uh, so when they fixed the car they put a used rack in it. After checking again later turns out the rack was not for an M3. It didn't the part number didn't list at all for an M3. So what we did was we found a used rack for specifically an M3 with a comp package. We verified the numbers on it. It's supposedly out of a good perfectly working parts car. I'm hoping that's the case. <laughs> so that's where we're going to start. Get this thing lifted up, get the old rack pulled out, put this rack in and uh, go from there. So let's get this thing up in the air and get to work. All right guys, before we get too deep into today's video, I wanted to talk to you about today's video sponsor, Athletic Greens. So AG1 by Athletic Greens is a nutritional drink that contains over 75 different ingredients, including vitamins, minerals, probiotics, adaptogens. I mean, just about everything healthy you can think of. And it's more than just a greens powder. Obviously it has your greens in there too, but on top of that, it's a multivitamin, multimineral, pre and probiotic, which is great for me because I need a simple health routine. I can't be <laughs> trying to keep track of so many different things, you know, taking my vitamins and paying attention to how many greens I'm getting and all of this stuff. Instead, one scoop, eight to 12 ounces of cold water, shake it up and I'm good to go, I'm on the go. And it gives me a nice clean energy that lasts throughout the day without any jitters or any feeling like that. I just feel better <laughs> drinking it than I do trying to supplement that with caffeine. So I really like it. It's made it really easy for me to stay on top of my health routine. I mean, the easier something is to do, the more likely you are to keep up with it. And this is about as easy as it gets to get so many of the things your body needs in one shot. You know, it's a piece of cake. And I feel it tastes great. Like, I don't know how they made it taste so good. So if you're interested in trying it out for yourself, go to athleticgreens.com forward slash Taylor Ray with two R's. Athletic Greens is going to give you guys a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D plus K3, as well as five free travel packs for your first order. So definitely check it out. Uh, link down in the description. Uh, and that being said, we need to get to work, get this thing sorted out. So let's get to it. All right, rack is out. That's probably, it's got to be, that's the easiest rack removal I've ever done. That's the easiest rack removal way I have ever seen. Two bolts, that thing slides really easy. You can get to everything. There's actually a lot of room to get to stuff down here. I've never really looked deeply at one of these on the lift. They seem very complicated from the top, but there's definitely a lot of access down here, more so than I would have thought. I'll say that for sure. Uh, just looking around, I'm pretty, pretty impressed by that. 
Uh, so, uh, I think we may have found a bit of a smoking gun on the steering angle freaking out issue. So, if you look at this rack, I centered this rack and eyeballed this to where what it looked like with this one in the car for the slit, even though it's broken because the dude doesn't know how to ship stuff, uh, but it's centered. So, with it where the joint is centered, which is where the steering wheel is centered, it's centered. Measured at 74 mil on both sides. This one, with the slit here, which is how they had it, is not centered. It's offset to one side. I measured it and I looked at it and it is drastically offset to one side. So about there is centered, which then your steering wheel wouldn't line up. I'm hopeful now <laughs> that it might be that simple. You never know though. Sometimes you'll think, I found the smoking gun. This is it, it's gonna fix it. And it's, it's the same, <laughs> you know, so. We're gonna toss this back in. We're gonna align it. We need to grab our alignment stuff out of the trailer and actually tow it. I'll get it properly aligned once we're done tinkering and uh, see see how it goes. I think we'll probably need to recalibrate it. But I'm hopeful maybe we throw it in and it just works. That'd be pretty cool. So enough jibber jabber, back to work. All right, well, we got it roughly aligned. <laughs> Definitely better than it was, just full on eyeball aligned. Uh, the caster is a little different on this side. The camber is a little different on this side. Uh, so things need to get adjusted. I think the, the tension arm needs to be replaced, uh, but it's roughly aligned. The toe is correct and it's got the rack. The rack is centered, the wheel is straight. See how it goes? Maybe it'll be happy now. I doubt it. I doubt it'll just be like, yeah, we're good. We're fixed. It, it might. It might still be a problem, but find out. Let's go give it a shot. The sensors are working. There's no power steering. What? Yeah. Did you plug it in? Yeah. I know it's something stupid, but I didn't uh, see you. I did. To drive moderately, increase steering effort required. Consult the service center, and it's like manual steering now. So we need to figure out how we reset that. So uh, we now have no power steering which is what I, I assumed it would not be happy with just changing the rack. We're gonna need to recalibrate it. All right, well, we've reached a bit of a wall. We've gone about as far as we can ourselves with the uh, tool set <laughs> that we have. So at this point, the rack needs to be coated to the vehicle and then recalibrated. We don't have the scan tool to do that. Uh, it's about a $2,000 scan tool that we would need to accomplish that uh, from what I can tell. Now, normally I'd be all about spend the money on the tool instead of the labor for someone who has the tool and then I have the tool, I can use it forever. But that kind of tool is really only gonna be useful for this car. And I mean, I'm sure maybe down the line I'll end up getting one anyway and diving down that road. But right now, I just don't care to, to get involved with all that. Fortunately, we have a shop, PSI, uh, and I have known them forever. I, uh, I used to go there when I was 16, 17 years old, my buddy worked there. So I've known about them forever, but I've never had a car worth bringing to them. Uh, so it's kind of cool that they're they're local. Um, and that was really part of the reason for getting this car was I knew if it wasn't some simple plug and play solution, they're right down the road and I know they can figure it out if anyone can. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna load this thing up, take it down there and uh, let them try to sort through it. I just want to drive it. This is one of those cars, as much as I want to learn and tinker and all that stuff, we've got a lot of other projects to focus on and I just want to enjoy this thing. That was kind of the point of it. The point wasn't to be a project, it was more so just to be a car I got to go rip around and enjoy. So hopefully we can get back to that here soon. So let's get this thing loaded on the trailer. All right, car is loaded up on the trailer. It's always such a cool sight to see the white on white. 
the tow rig and the car on the trailer. All right, let's roll. All right, well, we dropped the car off at PSI. Um, they ended up having it for about a week. We were headed to pick it up, so they did fix it. They coated the rack, got that all working, but that didn't fully clear our chassis code or our pedestrian code. They found an acceleration sensor was bad, um, and our hope was like that they would replace that and the pedestrian situation would be tied to that. If not, then that's another rabbit hole. And this was the biggest thing with this car that I was concerned about was whether these codes that were limiting it and making being obnoxious because the codes just pop up over and over again, even if you don't close them, would be a rabbit hole to figure out. And fortunately, they changed the acceleration sensor. It fixed all the codes, including the pedestrian ones. The only thing we have left is to do the TPMS reset, um, which they were going to do, but they were sketched out by the belt noise. They were afraid the belt was gonna fail, which could wreak havoc. So I decided, you know what? I wanna just enjoy this car. I don't wanna get it back and then wait till I have time to do all the belt stuff. So I just had them go ahead and knock out the belt stuff too. It's weird for me because the only time I've ever had a shop work on my car is cage work or paint work. You know, just two things I can't do or can't do easily. We've, we've been doing our paint work lately too. Uh, so, but it's kind of nice. Like dropped it off, worked on other stuff that was more pressing for a week and now we're picking it back up and hopefully it's sorted. So we still have a couple things to do when we get it home. Um, but we're gonna pick it up with the trailer just to be safe. It doesn't have the front wheel wells in it still. We wanna get those in before we drive it, especially with it raining. So we're gonna pick this thing up put it on the trailer, bring it home, tidy up the loose ends, and hopefully go drive it and actually get to enjoy it for the first time. All right, she's loaded up. Trying to take her home. All right, well, we made it back from PSI and we're diving into the last little things we wanted to do ourselves. We need to get the fender liners in, uh, some other little touch-up things, and we need to replace this oil cooler. It obviously got bent when the car was wrecked originally and did not get replaced. I mean, it's holding fluid, but if it were to spring a leak, that would be bad news. So we're gonna fix that. Um, but what a cool experience to take my own car to PSI. You know, I think back to when I was 17 years old and I went there for the first time to get some springs for my friend Zach, hung out with him and David, and then, you know, I'd go over there every so often just to hang out because it was such a cool shop to go to. There's so many cool, crazy cars. You know, I'm 17 with my ratty 944 and just seeing all those cars in this beautiful shop in downtown uh it, it was just cool you know i always admired that shop and the way they did things so to you know 12 years later take my own card there and have them fix it it's kind of cool it's like things come full circle you know i never would have 17 year old me would never have thought that i would have this car and be taking it to them to fix it you know 
Uh, so huge shout out to PSI. They got that knocked out super quick. They got me in quick. They have a ton of work over there. They're always so busy. Um, so I was very grateful they were able to work me in so quick. So anyway, we need to get our end of the of the deal done, <laughs> get our work done so we can go to enjoy this thing. Uh, so I've got a Mishimoto upgraded oil cooler. So it's a bar and plate style, really nice oil cooler. I run these, I have essentially the same thing on the Sephiro here. Uh, just, you know, aftermarket with AN. So luckily this is, uh, they made it as just a drop-in replacement. So we'll get this thing tossed in there, get the oil changed. I picked up some oil from them. So we have fresh OEM oil, a couple little projects and we should be ready to go rip this thing. That new funnel. All right, a little cooler is on. That looks much, much better uh, than it did before. Uh, obviously one, because it's not bent, but two, because it's a nice upgraded Mishimoto one. It looks good in there. I do want to get a skid plate for this. So all we got to do is finish up our oil change before we put oil in it. We got to change the filter and then go test drive it with all the th little things fixed or done or whatever. I don't want to say fixed. I don't want to jinx myself. I'm so afraid that we're going to do something that's going to trip out some module and then we're not going to be able to drive the car when I haven't even got to drive it since it's been fixed because we brought it straight in here to finish it up. This car stresses me out. I don't like not having the ability to fix you know, anything that could go wrong on a car that I own, but it's the price you gotta pay for all the fancy technology. So anyway, we're gonna get back to work and then let's go drive this thing. All right, well, we got this thing back together with all those little odds and ends. We got all the plastics underneath. We got the one plastic that was missing in the interior. We even got our rear diffuser back on. That was missing. Uh, we still need to get this side skirt from the guy. Need to get floor mats. I'm sure there's some other odds and ends we'll need to take care of on this thing. There is some wiring that was ripped off at one point that I want to fix, but as a whole, it's a running driving car currently with no codes <laughs> hopefully that lasts yeah I'm, I'm stoked man it's very different for us you know we're used to building swapped cars and making everything new so like to put all those little pieces back is tedious but it's pretty satisfying so we'll need to fix that door too but nothing left to it but to do it let's take it for a drive so sway's only ridden in it when we were buying it right and it was in basically limp mode so now i get to see what this thing's really like so Let's go drive it, make sure it still works. So this is an efficient, let's put it in M1. So this is all comfort mode. I 
It's going to take me a little time to trust it and not be paranoid that I'm going to break it just looking at it and not be able to fix it. But see, this is what's exciting is like, you know, comfortably drive this to the Dragon. Go rip all weekend. Comfortably drive it home. No freaking wild, noisy car, trailer in a car up there. Dang, that's a baller. Like you said, it makes it feel like you're not going that fast. Oh, it's sick. So uh, we still need to align the car a little bit better. We aligned it with, uh, you know, the same stuff we use on the race cars. And, it, you know, you can get pretty accurate, but you're not going to get, like, super accurate. And when you're, you're kind of eyeballing the wheels in relation to each other, you might have, you know, no toe, but they're pointed one direction. So it's, it's tricky to get it perfect. And it's, we did a pretty good job, but it's a little off just like the ever so slightest bit to the left. It's so much quieter with the exhaust not open. Yeah, I'm gonna be paranoid for a little bit. Like I'm watching the temp, I'm like, is this normal? Are we getting to normal temp mode? If it's happy, I'm happy. Was there an option that said check oil level? Yes. I'm just afraid to do it because I don't want it to like read it and it be off or something <laughs> and then it throws a code. <laughs> That's definitely, obviously, the one gripe with this car is just my inability to work on it easily as far as the electronics are concerned. I'll, I'll get over it once I get used to it. Once I drive it some more, I get more confidence in it that it's not going to break again immediately and I get to enjoy it for a little while. I won't be so paranoid about, like, oh, what if I mess something up and then I don't get to drive it? All I wanted to do this whole time was drive it, you know? Yeah. And like, I've wanted one for a while and was like, you know, impatient in that sense. Like, oh, I want one, I want one, I want one. And waited months and then finally bought one and then couldn't even use it. Just want to use it for a little while before anything else happens. Well, we're using it, buddy. We're using it. Let's go. All right, well, so far so good with this thing. I am uh, super happy to have it sorted out. Uh, that was the big concern buying this car. You know, it was a gamble. If the issues were what they seemed to be at face value, we were gonna be in good shape. But if they weren't, you know, you never know how deep that rabbit hole goes. If you can even find the bottom of it, you know, it could be some just grim one that, that even the best BMW tech can't find. So it was a gamble in that sense. And I'm glad that it was able to be sorted out. And now we have a working car that we can go enjoy. So. I'm really excited to start driving this thing around, man. It, it, it makes me happy. It puts a smile on my face. I know this kind of car is not everyone's cup of tea. It used to not be my cup of tea at all. I had no interest in these cars, but I'm pretty pumped, man. I'm pretty pumped to, to have something like this to just drive around and enjoy. And I'm really ready to book a weekend trip to the Dragon, drive this thing up there and just rip all weekend. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. Hopefully we just enjoy this thing for a while until we get bored of the uh, stock power and end up tuning it or something. But for now, just a cruise. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I hope to see you guys next time. But for now, that's it. All right. Goodbye.